Starting off with willpower, three is just slightly below the average. Moving on to his specialty, intellect. He can't match Daisy, but he is right up there in the number two spot. And speaking of Daisy, he is down at the low end with her, but he definitely isn't the worst. And neither is he the worst at evasion. As a Dunwich investigator, Rex will have an additional point of health or sanity over the core box investigators. Sanity-wise, he is definitely the man of steel, right up there at the top spot with nine, which means he's conversely got a terribly wheezy chest, and you should definitely be worried by his health. His ability says, after you succeed at a skill test by two or more while investigating, discover one clue at your location. Now let's take a close look at the wording. It says, while investigating. This doesn't just mean taking the investigate action, but any card with the word investigate, such as flashlight, burglary, but not strain solution as that doesn't say investigate. It won't work with cards like working a hunch, however, as these don't initiate any kind of investigation test. Rex's ability is not adding to the number of clues you are discovering. It is a separate effect, so you don't need to be discovering clues. Why not use it when searching for Izzy? That way you can help a friend and get a clue, or use it with right of seeking to discover three clues, but you need to succeed by two or more, don't forget. The last part says, discover one clue at your location. So if you play Seeking Answers and succeed by two or more, you discover one clue at a connecting location because of the card effect, and one at Rex's current location because of his investigator ability. This is an amazing way to get clues twice as fast as any other investigator. So make sure you're packing magnifying glasses and Dr. Milan to ensure you succeed by two as often as possible. This is a reaction trigger, however, so you get to choose whether to activate it or not. So if you need to leave some clues for Roland Banks... Roland Banks! Oh, now you're getting worse. The other blue one. That's better. So, if you need to leave some clues for Roland Banks and his cover-up, or his 38 special, then don't trigger it. And discover means remove a clue from a location, and not magic one out of thin air. Rex's Elder Sign effect is plus two, which is one of the highest in the game. He may choose to fail this skill test in order to draw three cards. It does have to be a skill test, so if you are drawing Chaos Tokens for other scenario based reasons, you can't use it. Card draw is a rare and powerful ability, still dominated by the Seekers, and three cards is not to be sniffed at. Don't do it in combat, but if you are investigating or burglarizing, then maybe do, as the penalty for failure is low, and you can probably just repeat the action if you fail. Rex's bonus card is Search for the Truth, and it says, draw X cards where X is the number of clues on Rex Murphy to a maximum of five. As Rex is going to be your primary clue gatherer, chances are he will have plenty of clues, particularly during multiplayer. Like most signature cards, it has three icons, and it isn't indispensable, unlike Wendy's amulet, so you may want to commit it to ensure you succeed by two when investigating. His weakness is Rex's curse, which says, revelation, Put Rex's curse into play in your threat area, and it's going to sit there until the next effect triggers. Forced, when you would succeed at a skill test, return the revealed chaos token to the bag and reveal a new chaos token. If this effect causes you to fail the test, shuffle Rex's curse into your deck. Limit once per test. So what does that mean? Basically, when you have Rex's curse in play, you need to succeed twice. Let's say we're investigating. We draw a chaos token on the test, as per usual. If it's a failure, nothing else happens. But if it's a success, then the forced effect on the weakness triggers, which says, return the revealed chaos token to the bag and reveal a new chaos token. Now, if this new token means we succeed again, Rex's curse will remain in the threat area once more, ready to trigger on the next successful test. But if we had failed the test, then you shuffle Rex's curse into your deck. Notice how it never goes to your discard pile. It either remains in your threat area on a success or goes back to your deck before being drawn again. And if you reveal an Elder Sign token as your second token, you can choose and fail to shuffle the curse back into your deck. Suddenly all that easy card draw looks a lot more sinister. You might want to pack an old book of lore or a scrying if you're paranoid about this, or even a rabbit's foot to prepare for the inevitable. There is one final quirk with Rex's curse, and that has to do with the timing of skill tests, and the fact that the card doesn't say to cancel or ignore the first token you drew. When you draw a token with a symbol that is featured on the scenario reference card, you apply additional consequences in step 4, resolve chaos symbol effects. It is only when you've got down to step 6, determine success or failure of a skill test, that Rex's curse will actually trigger, sending you back up to step 3 to reveal another chaos token. If the Chaos Token is another symbol, either the same one or different, you again are 
resolve the chaos symbol effects. And then again, down to determine the success or failure of the skill test. So if you draw two symbols, you will be applying two lots of symbol effects, even though you'll only be able to count the modifiers on one of the tokens. A lone seeker relies on getting the clues to advance the act deck much more efficiently than anyone else. Their speed is their strength, and their need to rush towards completing the final act before the engender and encounter cards overwhelm them. Rex is a monster when it comes to clues, so much so he led to the term Clouverer, someone that hoovers up clues really fast. Going toe to toe with enemies isn't good, because of his low health and tiny combat stat. Even things like the machete and fire axe won't help. On those occasions when you have to defeat an enemy, to advance the scenario, pack mind over matter instead. Having more investigators means more clues per investigator, and there is a reason the seekers are coloured Pac-Man yellow. With other investigators who can fight, evade or taunt the enemies out of his way, he can waka 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 his way around the locations with ease. And with other investigators committing cards to his investigate test, he is more likely to succeed by two each time. The core box investigators all had deck building requirements, which are the cards that you must put into your deck. Rex is the first we've seen with deck building restrictions, which are cards you aren't allowed to put in your deck. Thematically, he can't include any fortune cards. Most of them he couldn't take anyway, like Sure Gamble, but Lucky is a real pain in the bum, and so is Double or Nothing. There are no experienced seeker cards in the Dunwich box, so your only choices come from the core box. The Disc of Examiner is a one-shot item that only affects non-elite enemies. It can be invaluable for solo play to get you out of a jam, if you aren't using the Holy Rosary for the willpower boost. Rex already has plenty of card draw, so Cryptic Research isn't the star of the show, because the more you draw, the sooner you get cursed. But it doesn't use an action and can be played on any investigator at his location, so consider it for team play. Encyclopedia is great in single or multiplayer, as that plus two to any stat is so versatile. It can help you trigger your investigator ability, or shake off a nagging encounter card. Or you could even use it to turn Rex into a decent spellcaster for a really trippy game. The experienced magnifying glass is probably worthwhile to suck up some spare XP, as the fast keyword means an extra turn spent investigating. It probably won't have a lot of competition for his hand slots either. The bulletproof vest is a cheap way to get his tiny health up to a more reasonable figure, assuming you aren't packing a lot of allies. But you're probably better off using his accessory slot for the Holy Rosary rather than an Elder Sign amulet. Zoe is possibly almost as good at combat as Rex is at clovering, and everyone loves a good day out with Agnes. 